Today I'm going to show you how to install an LG dishwasher, specifically model number LDFN4542D. However, this installation will apply to all current LG models. First off, if you haven't uninstalled your existing dishwasher, check out my video where I'll walk you through step by step how to get your old dishwasher uninstalled. Now, I want to go ahead and point out the space that we're working with is going to be for a standard 24 inch dishwasher and we're actually going to be doing a top mount for securing the dishwasher um, because these, these countertops do actually have wood support underneath. Um, however, this does give you the option to do a side mount. This particular model will allow you to do a side mount installation if that's what you'll need. And additionally, if, you're, if you do have a, a quartz or a granite countertop and um, you don't actually have the, the support to drill through, I do have another video that will walk you through how to in install to the bottom of a hard stone like granite or um, quartz. Check that out as well. Now, moving over this way. The only thing uh, that I'd like you to identify down here is you're going to factor in or keep in mind where your dishwasher drain hose is going to be connected. So in our installation, we're going to be showing you, you know, connecting it to the garbage disposal, which is where our, our uh, drain is. Or you can potentially, if you don't have a garbage disposal or yours is um, not the, the source for the drain, you'll have um, an, a, a tip, like an extension um, from your PVC piping. The other thing you want to look for is your uh, where the water supply line will be connected so you'll either have you know a CPVC pipe back here or copper piping with the 3 8 inch connection for the water supply which is that that's ours there and then if you're also doing a direct plug-in the outlet will also be located under your sink if you're not doing a direct plug-in and yours is hardwired then you'll likely have a line coming in this area like an electric line that you'll see towards the bottom behind the dishwasher where you'll be able to wire your dishwasher direct. Let's go ahead and get your new dishwasher unpackaged and go over what you should find inside. I'm going to show you a quick little tip. You can simply pull this tab up and it weakens it and then it just easy slides off. Same thing, so boom, just pops right off. And one more, done. So that makes it nice and easy to remove that and then this box simply just pulls over your dishwasher. Be careful, one of the things that happens to me all the time is with the styrofoam and the, and the packaging, there could be some static build up, so when you touch the dishwasher, you might feel a little shock. It's a little wake up call, make sure you Get all that stuff to move out of your way. As you can see, the dishwasher is still positioned on a styrofoam base. So what you're going to want to do is you can walk this off of it. It's pretty easy to do. Just either if you have a hand, two of you can lift it off. Otherwise, I like to I just step down on this and then I can angle it off to get to here. And then I just slide my styrofoam out of the way. All right. So included with this dishwasher, you're going to have of course, your owner's manual and installation instructions, as well as this little bag back here that will be located in your silverware basket. And this bag will include your mounting brackets and hardware, as well as a clamp for the drain hose. So that's what's going to be located in this bag. And you'll find that in your silverware basket. In addition to that, you're also going to have a quick guide as well as like install installation instructions that will give you some specifics um, and just some tips to consider and a template that will allow you to know the correct placement if you don't have an existing, if you're not replacing an existing dishwasher, it'll give you an exact uh, placement depending on what side of the um, sink your dishwasher is located so that you know where to put your bowl. And then finally, this also, with this model dishwasher, the drain hose comes pre-attached from the manufacturer as you can see here and it's attached to this bracket right here that's at the top and what you're going to want to do is go ahead and get that removed from that and this is not to stay 
This insulation stays, don't pull any of that off. That's just insulation, sound barrier. But this part comes off and it's just held on by two screws. One here and one on the opposite side. To get that removed and it will simply just slide right off once you're done there. And now it's time to go ahead and prepare your dishwasher for installation. In addition to the hardware that was included with your dishwasher, which included the brackets and the clamp, you also need a dishwasher kit and my particular dishwasher kit includes the stainless steel braided line for the water supply, as well as a standard three-pronged dishwasher power cord. Wire nuts to attach the power cord. And then most dishwasher kits will also include an elbow of some sort. Um, this is the standard elbow currently, the 90 degree elbow for the water supply, however, on LG dishwashers, you will actually not need this. LG has this end already pre-attached on the dishwasher, so you won't need this. But typically, when you purchase a dishwasher kit, like a, a complete kit, it'll include it. You won't need it for, for this installation. And as far as tools, all you'll need in this step is simply a Phillips screwdriver, uh, just a Phillips bit screwdriver or drill, and then the 5 8 inch open wrench to attach the supply line, the dishwasher supply line, or you can use an open wrench um, to, to attach that as well. And then of course, as I mentioned previously, your drain hose is already a, uh, attached and, and ready to go. First thing you want to do is go ahead and lay your dishwasher on its back so we can get it prepared. And go ahead and start off you're going to find that the kick plate is already attached from the manufacturer, secured by two screws. So this is where you'll need your Phillips screwdriver. Just pop off the two screws. And your kick plate now is removed and out of the way. Then I'm going to go ahead and show you, point out a few things. This is going to be the electrical box where the power cord is going to be secured and attached. And then this is going to be where the water supply line will be connected. As I said, it has the elbow pre-attached from the factory. Then um, you got the leveling legs. In the front, you're going to find two. And then on the back, there's just one in the center that's actually controlled by this screw here. So this is how we'll be able to make the adjustments there. Since we're talking about those, we'll go ahead and get that done now. What you want to do is go ahead and break loose these feet. Um, they're a lot easier to do when you don't have any pressure on them. So just break them loose. Do all of them. Break them loose here, and uh, do the same thing with the back. Make sure that the mechanism that controls that is functioning. It shows you which direction to turn so that um, you could uh, get it brought down. So we are gonna go just like that. As you can see, so don't go too high up so it doesn't make it too hard for you to slide in. You just want to get them started. That's it. Just so that, so that's it. All right, let's get right to it. We'll go ahead and get started with. Better get the um, water supply attached first. So as I mentioned, the steel braided line that's included in your dishwasher kit um, is actually already has built-in seal. So you don't need anything in addition to that. This line, that seal makes the, the seal so that you don't have any, you know, it'll make it a tight seal so you don't have any leaks. But simply attach that to the elbow and I recommend you thread it by hand as far as it'll go. Because what's really important is that you don't over tighten them. That rubber, that seal that's in there is rubber. And over, over tightening it can create a leak. Um, so go as far as you can by hand and then all you need to do is simply give it Oh yeah, at most, you can feel for it. You just don't want to overdo it. So once you get to a point where you're getting some you know, resistance, you'll, that'll be your tight end. But don't worry, once we get this water line hooked up, we'll go ahead and test to make sure that we don't have any, any leaks. So as I said, don't over tighten it. And um, the way to tell is you just make sure if you, try, once it's tightened enough, you shouldn't be able to grab it by hand and turn it. Like this part shouldn't be loose from that. Um, and then this is you can't do it by hand, so that's that's going to be your indicator that it's it's, it's snug. Um, the next thing we'll go ahead and do is go ahead and attach our power cord. So remove this 
cover. Once that's that removed, and yeah, okay. Something stuff me. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, so get that removed, and the power cord that I'm using already includes the stress relief clamp so that's nice if it if you have a power cord that doesn't include it be sure to add it because you don't want the wires loose in there or don't have any kind of um, uh, they're not just uh, s secured into the box so you're gonna simply with this particular cord or the stress relief you're gonna push slide that through this back hole and then it'll clip into place if you have a metal stress relief clamp um, you slide it through and then thread that on um, and then at this point all we're gonna need is our three wire nuts and we're gonna go ahead and collect, connect the electric here for the power cord the nice thing in this part is that it is color coded so all you'll need to do is match the colors you're gonna have your ground wire so the green with the green and then there's the black wire for your hot so black with black and then your neutral wire white with white um, what's important here is just as you saw, you're going to go ahead and get the, the, the ends here lined up as close as possible without um, twisting them in any way and use the actual wire nut to do the twisting for you. And just make sure you're holding the wires down here where my, see my thumb, holding them tight so that they don't actually start twisting. So hold them straight and just use the wire nut to twist the wire tips and go as much as it'll go and uh, just double check that nothing's loose. Give each, each wire separately a tug and make sure it doesn't break loose. And you're gonna repeat that for all three, the hot and the neutral. All right, once you've verified that all, all those are nice and tight, you can go ahead and clean up your wires so that they can fit back in this box. And we can go ahead and put the cover back on. You can either do that in this step or wait until you actually get it plugged in so you can test that you don't have any issues with any of your connections. I'm pretty confident in mine, um, but typically you could either wait until the testing part to actually put this cover back on it's just easier to do it from this angle so I'm gonna go ahead and get it popped back on and so electric is ready water supply is ready the feet have been prepared for adjustment the drain hose already pre-attached the final step in preparing the dishwasher is going to just be locating how you're going to be securing it and when you're ready to mount it um, as I mentioned we're going to be securing ours to the bottom of our countertop so I'm going to go ahead and locate the bag that included your mounting brackets and this simply just goes it's actually labeled right here on the frame on each side you got a spot for the bracket and it simply goes just like this you'll see just goes right from, you're gonna go this angle, and it flips around. Then once you get here, this little tab can just be bent in. Just like that, and that'll hold it in place. You're gonna repeat the same thing on this side. Just go, so it goes this way, you just go simply go like this, bend over there, and just like that. And now it's ready to go. Okay, before we start sliding this dishwasher in place, what's important is to consider how you're gonna be feeding the lines under your sink. If your setup is like ours, where you have an angle, um, it's, you, you have some flexibility in whether or not the hole is drilled at the top or at the bottom because there's that empty space area that gives the lines room to maneuver. However, if your dishwasher is directly next to your sink and you, it's a, it's a, it's a tight, like, tight cabinet right there where it's a tight wall on both sides, then it's really important that you reference the template and the hole that you drill out is towards the bottom and, and feed all your lines through the bottom and then create a 
high rise loop for the drain hose in order for your dish, the dishwasher to function properly. But in our situation, our setup here, I have I already have a couple holes drilled out and you'll see I'm gonna be running my water supply line as well as my power cord through that bottom hole and then I have a hole up top where I'm gonna run my drain hose and being able to run it through the top allows me to not have to create that high loop, it's automatic because it's going to be running from the top and then I'm able to go ahead and make my connection right into the drain. Okay, so we're going to start off by feeding the lines under the sink. So this drain hose is just going to run right here through the top to get it started and then we'll go ahead and grab our electric and our water supply. So the lip is just going to go right through the bottom hole and then your water supply go right through that bottom hole as well. Now get your dishwasher centered um, in the hole. Make sure your lines, once you get it centered, before you start to push it into place, just make sure all your lines are free. They're not uh, pinched in any way or stuck underneath anything. And Get it centered, and once you get it centered, just slide it in to space about halfway. Um, and then once you get it slid in about halfway, what you want to go ahead and do is just make sure you didn't lose your lines, and go ahead and start pulling them through the uh, into you know into under, you know, under underneath the sink. So here's my drain hose. Get that, and then same thing. Pull your supply and pull your power cord. Just. Uh, gets you confirmed that everything's nice and free and then what you're going to do is go back to the dishwasher and continue to push it into place to go as far as it will allow you as long as you don't feel anything getting uh, pinched so once you get to this point now it's, up, it's about as far as it's going to go in and, and then go ahead and pull the rest of your lines and get them prepared to make the connections pull them all the way through Okay, now we're going to go ahead and make the connections under the sink and test for leaks. So, first thing I like to start off with is actually the water supply when I get under the sink. This way I can get the water turned on and allow the water to flow. Um, and if there's going to be a leak, at least it'll you know arise during this time. So let's go ahead and get that connected. Same thing applies here. Um, just don't over tighten this hose. So I'm going to go ahead and get that tightened down. When you're, when you're attaching this steel braided line, say go by hand as much as possible and then as you saw you don't need very much more. Now this won't to twist in any way. Um, then just make sure with the this thing. If you have a CPVC pipe, be sure to put a hand on it um, as you're tightening this down so you don't just uh, potentially crack the pipe. Once you have that tightened, go ahead and turn the water on. So I heard the water kick on and my water is flowing through. It's nice and dry here. At this point, just so that you, know, you can correct it if there's an issue there, go ahead and take a peek under the dishwasher and just verify that the connection you made under the dishwasher is also nice and dry, that there's no leaks there uh, at the moment. So that's perfect. We'll go ahead and continue the connecting underneath the sink. While we're over on this side, I'm a direct plug-in. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my power cord. And then finally, locate the hardware that was included, that was included with the dishwasher. It came with the clamp for the drain and it's you could use a couple of different options for tightening it down either a flathead or a socket there 
Okay, before you connect the, um, your drain hose, if you're draining into a garbage disposal, just be sure to make sure that the, uh, the plug that's in the garbage disposal has already been removed. So you can just grab a screwdriver and just make sure that that's been notched out already. Uh, and then if you're, and then the other thing is to consider, as you can see on the drain hose, you have a few different tiers for the, depending on where you're draining. If you're going into a garbage disposal, that's usually the thickest, the, you know, the largest size. So that goes in nice and snug as you see. Otherwise, if you have a stem coming off of your PVC, it's gonna be smaller and it's gonna go like this. What's important is that when you, wherever you tighten down the clamp, it's at the tightest part of the, for the drain hose. What you don't wanna see is if you do, you know, if this is the drain and then you tighten it down here and you create this look, that'll end up creating a leak. So just double check that. Um, and then now we're ready to go ahead and secure this. Um, we can go ahead and just slide it over that and we can go ahead and get this tightened down as such. Okay, now that that's tightened down, just make sure this, this could be as tightened as much as you can go with it. Um, once that's done, you can just give it a little tug and you'll make sure it's nice and tight. Once your connections are done here, if, the, the, if you did end up running your drain hose through the bottom, just be sure that once you feed it into your cabinet, whichever side you're doing it, on that same side, you want to create a high-rise loop. So if you're coming in from this side, just like we are, you want to go up with the drain hose and then create that high-rise loop and then connect it. And typically you could attach it to, attach it to something um, at the bottom of your sink. You could use a zip tie or a clamp of some sort. So there's definitely a, a few different ways of doing it, but it's really important that you attach it and it stays up because if you don't create the high rise loop, what's gonna happen is your drain hose is just gonna go from there straight into here, and then you're gonna have a sagging drain. And with a sagging drain, water will backflow into the dishwasher. It could potentially be water from, you know, when the dishwasher finishes its cycle, finishes draining, any water that's in the line that didn't siphon into the drain, it'll just naturally go right back into the dishwasher. Or if you fill your sink, and water goes out, so like obviously water travels down. So if your drain hose is not creating this loop, it's gonna naturally just wanna you know, go whichever direction it'll go in the downward motion. And, and that's pretty much it at this point. Okay, if you had your power turned off at this point, go ahead and turn your breaker back on and, and you'll be able to, what we'll do is go ahead and do a test before you actually start to um, button everything up. And as I mentioned, you at this point we've verified that your water connection down here is nice and dry. The water's turned on. There's no issues there. Uh, though, so now the next thing you want to test for leaks is for drainage. Just simply do go ahead and pop a few things out so you can get the water going. And then all you got to do at this point is. Just, you just normal, it doesn't matter. For the test, you're not gonna actually let it run through the whole cycle. So we'll power it on, just do a normal cycle, and go ahead and start it. Once it starts, what's gonna happen is you're gonna hear the dishwasher start preparing, and it'll fill with water. Let it fill fully with water, and let it begin the wash cycle. Once it washes, starts to wash, all you have to do at this point, you know it's running, there's water in there, go ahead and hold down the start button, and that will cancel the cycle. Once it cancels, any water that's filled in is gonna go ahead and drain. At that point, you can now verify for any leaks with the drain. Just make sure, get a good eye underneath the dishwasher, look around, make sure there's no factory defects with the tub leaking or the drain hose, and then also check underneath your sink where you made the, dry, dry, uh, the drain connection, whether it's to the disposal or your PVC. Just verify that. And then once you have that verified, now the next step is you can go ahead and go ahead and get the unit. We'll go ahead and get the unit leveled and mounted and just ready for use. When you start the leveling process, what's the most important part of leveling the dishwasher is to make sure that it's completely square in the hole. This way the door will open and close properly. And you can pick some key, you know, key areas to look and be able to you know, look at whether or not, you know, as far as the leveling goes, so just keeping an eye like as far as this gap and this gap are as close as possible, or as even as possible, and then as well as this side 
and then and this side as well. So just having it to where your dishwasher is centered in the hole, the space on this side and the space on that side is as even as possible. And you can go ahead and start adjusting the legs that I pointed out earlier. And at this point, all you're gonna do, um, I like to begin with getting my back leg as close to the level that I want it to be and then just adjusting my front legs up to making that you know final hook. So we'll go ahead and do that now. As you see, as I'm, as I'm adjusting that leg down, you can see the dishwasher coming forward. So that's good. Might be a little too much, but I'm gonna drop it back down a little bit. When you're doing this step, use a, um, it doesn't need a lot. I don't recommend using a driver drill. They have way too much torque and can mess up that assembly arm. So just use a Phillips screwdriver or just a regular drill. And then once you have that leaning forward, you can go ahead and adjust the front legs so that you can close the gap at the top and get it as close to the counter as possible uh, just for a nice clean look. So we'll adjust that down. Once, once you get it to about where it looks good, you can open the door and just look at the, your sides and all around and you have a nice even look right before you actually secure the dishwasher. So once we have it in place, just make some final adjustments here to try secure it. Level it. Just be sure that the, it's slid in even on both sides. It's nice and even. My gap on one side is even with the other. And now we can go ahead and secure it. Once you open the door, you adjust a little bit to so just make sure that you've got it exactly where you want it. You can do a couple of things to get it to hold in place, but typically you can pop it open. But you grab yourself a level at this point. Um, it's super important making sure that it's level because if, it, if it's not level and the door, the, the, the tub of the dishwasher itself is not even, then it won't close properly and you could potentially have a leak from the door. So just grab a level and just make sure that it's right there in the center. As you can see, it looks like we can go up a little bit more on this, up on the other side. So we can go up a little bit more to get that nice and even. A little bit more. And we're spot on right there. And then from just you can check both sides that it's even. Set the bubbles in the center. And then you don't actually, the, the tub on dishwashers is already set up to, to, to be at the right angle. So you don't need to have the dishwasher leaning to the back in any way. All you need to do is um, just get it squared and have it actually fully centered in the middle. So once it's in the middle, it's even, that's what's important. It, 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 so you have a nice straight look on it. It doesn't have to be leaning to the back. And finally, once you're there, just go ahead and grab your mounting screws. And it's the two, you just need a Phillips head drill bit and you can simply secure the dishwasher. So you're just gonna go right here and if you're doing an under cabinet mount, Both sides. If you're doing a side mount, all you gotta do in this step when you're ready to secure it is there's these little tabs. You just simply pop that out with um, just like a flathead screwdriver and you can actually get to the little bracket. There's a pre-built-in bracket on these LG models um, maybe hard, difficult to see there, but inside that hole, you can see a little bracket, and then all you're simply gonna do with the same thing, the mounting screws, it'll just go right through that access hole and then secure to the side of the cabinets if you have a filler piece there. Otherwise, there's that alternate option of being able to secure it to the bottom of a hard countertop with the addition of a, a bracket that, that's used specifically for that. So once that's done, you know, your final step 
is just attaching your kick plate. So you verify at this point, you make sure you have no leaks, everything's connected, power is good, drain is good, water supply is good, everything is good there. You can go ahead and attach your kick plate um, and it's going to just get reattached exactly how you took it off. And as you can see on these kick plates, the, it's got like a, a track where you can adjust it so that it adjusts, you know, it sits, it ends up being, you know, down to the, even with your floor. So we can just go down here and get that attached. Oops. This lines up right here and you can see it'll end up being about right there. Get that screw started, tighten it down, just like that. Same thing on the other side. There you have it, the dishwasher is ready for use. That's how to install an LG dishwasher. I really hope this video helps. Like and subscribe for more.